Seven reasons to dump seed and vegetable oils now. And I'm going to tell you, if I can only do one thing to your diet, this is the number one thing that I want you to do. And I'm going to show you why. These seed and vegetable oils contain something called linolenic acid, or LA. And when you consume excessive LA, which is one of the omega-6 fatty acids, it acts as a metabolic poison. That means it starts to poison you and your systems. Now, what's the problem? The average American diet is 25% of these oils, of the calories come from these oils. So let's go through the seven reasons to dump them. Number one, <clears throat> seed oils are far worse than sugar for obesity. Now that may surprise you. If you look at our sugar consumption, it went from six pounds in 1822 up to 108 pounds in 1999. Now that's a pretty significant increase, 17 fold increase. But if you look at what happened to these seed oils at the same time, they had a 25 fold increase during the same period. And let's look at their effect on obesity and diabetes. People always say, sugar is what makes you fat, quit the sugar. I would agree partially, but I would say the seed oils are a much bigger factor. So here's diabetes and obesity. Here's sugar consumption in 1809. There's the vegetable oil consumption. You can see sugar went up a little bit. Uh, vegetable oils increased significantly in 1935, but look at 2016. Significant increase in vegetable oils. Sugar increased a little bit, but not significantly. Look at diabetes and obesity. Highly connected with the amount of bad oils you're taking in. In 2015, a research found that soybean oil, one of these bad oils, induced obesity, insulin resistance, diabetes, and fatty liver in mice. Our results indicate that in mice, a diet high in soybean oil is more detrimental to metabolic health than fructose. And I, you know, fructose, high fructose corn syrup is really, really bad. Well, these oils can be worse. So how do they cause weight gain? One of the ways is they stimulate the endocannabinoid receptors. Now this is what causes the munchies in people that use cannabis. You get the munchies when you consume these vegetable oils. So a diet high in these oils makes people and animals crave carbohydrates and want to eat sweets and sweet foods. So the obvious solution to our weight epidemic is Stop consuming too much LA. We gotta radically reduce it. And then if we reduce it, we won't be stimulating these endocannabinoid receptors that cause us to crave carbohydrates. Second reason to stop using these oils is linolenic acid is not an essential oil, an essential fatty acid. Omega-3 is essential. Omega-6 is not. Now, I got to tell you, for decades, I have been teaching people that omega-6 fat, this type of oil, is essential. And I did it because of the studies that were done in 1929. They took uh, rats and they put them on a diet very low in linolenic acid. And they started developing skin lesions and tail necrosis. So they said, well, it looks like it's essential. We better make sure there's 2% of it in the average American diet. Now, 2%, it probably wouldn't be a problem, but we're up to 25% now. Further studies seem to confirm that this omega-6 was an essential fatty acid because in human infants, they restricted their omega-6 and they ended up having scaling of the skin. Now, anytime you have a skin problem, I think omega-3, not omega-6. But careful review of the data showed that these controlled diets were not only deficient in omega-6 fatty acids, but also omega-3, which is what caused the problem. 
Third reason is these polyunsaturated fatty acids are unstable. We've talked about this in past videos, but because of the bonds in them, they are highly susceptible to damage by oxygen species, or you might have heard of free radical damage. Those free radicals are produced in your body when your body produces energy and because these fats are unstable, they get damaged and they cause problems. Processed seed oils and vegetable oils get integrated into our cell and our mitochondrial membranes. And once they're in these membranes, they become damaged and it sets us up for all kinds of different health problems. So here's a cell and a nucleus. It's got the bad fats in there because they're consuming too much. Free radicals come along and they damage these membranes and can cause inflammation and even the death of a cell. <clears throat> Number four, linolenic acid damages your mitochondria. We've talked about this just a little bit, but it prevents the mitochondria from working like it should. It impairs mitochondrial function. Now, mitochondria are the energy-producing cells in or part of your cell that crank out 95% of your energy. And you can impair that production by taking in these vegetable oils. And you also can impair your thyroid function. So looking into the mitochondria more specifically, LA is known to inhibit something called cardioleptin. Now, cardioleptin protects something called the cristae, which is right here. That is where the energy is produced. So we, want, we don't want that part damaged. And LA inhibits cardioleptin from protecting that part. Now, cardioleptin also does a very important job inside the cell, like uh, signaling the cell to trigger apoptosis if the cell is becoming cancerous. Your body's got a self-defense mechanism that is activated when a cell starts going rogue and it destroys that cell and it's gone. Well, if you're taking in these vegetable oils, you can inhibit apoptosis from working and set you up for all types of other health problems. Number five, seed oils are the root of all chronic disease. There's just a whole list of them. Let me go through a few. <coughs> We know that these oils damage your cells that line your blood vessels, setting you up for vascular disease and heart disease. They also cause memory impairment and increase your risk of Alzheimer's disease, the feared disease that people don't want to get. And of all the oils that seem to have a triggering effect, canola oil is one that can be particularly bad because it's linked to Alzheimer's disease. It can strip your liver from glutathione, thereby lowering your antioxidant defense. It can inhibit important liver enzymes. It can impair your immune function and increase mortality. And it can make your fat cells more sensitive to insulin, making you gain weight. So oxidation, inflammation, mitochondrial dysfunction, the list goes on and on. Omega-3 is the good fat. We want to get that in. It comes from fish, supplements, and nuts. That decreases clotting, dilates arteries, is anti-inflammatory, decreases cancer, and enhances your immune system. What we want, omega-6, found in vegetable oils and seed oils, increases clotting, constricts arteries, is inflammatory, increases cancer, and suppresses your immune system. And if we had a little bit of this, it would be okay. In America, we've got 20 times as much of this as we do the omega-3. It should be a 2 to 1 ratio instead of a 20 to 1 ratio. Number six, LA contributes to heart disease and cancer. These are two of the biggest killers in America, and L linolenic acid is a significant contributor to both of these problems. Ultraviolet radiation damage is controlled by how much LA is in your diet. 
There's even evidence showing that eliminating these seed oils from your diet will drastically reduce your risk of sunburn and skin cancers. Now I gotta confess to you, when I grew up, this is what we had. For 20 years, Crisco, vegetable oils, margarine, and guess what? I could not go out in the sun very long without <laughs> sunburning. And I was outside working a lot and had lots of sunburns because of that. Now I will tell you, today I have changed the oils in my diet and I don't sunburn near as easily. That's how important making these changes is. And the last thing, and this is a very significant thing, linolenic acid stays in your body a long time. You eat a whole bunch of sugar, how long does it take for you to get, out, get it out of your body? A couple of days, maybe one day, it's out of your body. The half-life of these bad oils, that means the time it takes for your body to get rid of half of it is 600 to 680 days. So it is a couple years before you get a significant amount out of your body. Now it starts leaving the day you quit taking it in, so I want you to encourage you to change your oils. And in our next video, I'm gonna show you what to do with your oils. I'll show you the best oils to use, and I'm gonna show you the best meats to use, and I think this will surprise you. So make sure you subscribe to check out this video.